Many of the things we use, things found in neighborhood shops everywhere, come to us from far away. Everyone depends on gasoline and oil products. We certainly do in this country, just as people do in other countries throughout the world. Although every country in the world uses oil, it is found in its natural state only in certain places. Here, natural oil, called crude oil, is brought up from the depths of the earth. But before it can be used, it must be transported to refineries, where the crude oil is turned into the many products so familiar to us all. Ships are used to transport a great deal of crude oil and finished oil products, especially when sent from one country to another. These big ships, called tank ships, are built much different from most cargo vessels. Most of the cargo space is divided into huge tanks, designed especially for carrying liquid cargo. Heavy steel walls keep the contents of one tank from mixing with another. At many places, tank ships load and unload their cargoes at a wharf that reaches out into a harbor. Near the wharf, there is often a refinery where oil products are produced from crude oil. Storage tanks that hold either crude oil or finished oil products are also located nearby. Pipes lead from the storage tanks out to the wharf. They carry the liquid cargoes back and forth from ship to shore. A tank ship is a big bulky vessel. Loaded with crude oil, it's maneuvered gently into the wharf. Tugboats help in this difficult operation. The tank ship and its cargo weighs many tons. It could easily damage the wharf unless it is eased very gently into docking position. Then the big ship is tied to the wharf. Heavy rubber hoses are hoisted up onto the ship's deck. The other end of each hose is connected to a pipe on the wharf. The hose is bolted to a pipe on deck. When the connection is secure, a valve is opened allowing the crude oil to be pumped out of the big ship's separate tanks. The oil is forced through the hoses by pumps on the ship. It travels through perhaps several miles of steel pipes. The pipes lead eventually to the storage area behind the wharf. It takes about 24 hours to unload the entire cargo of a large tank ship. Loading a tank ship is just the opposite of unloading. The liquid cargo flows or is pumped out through the steel pipes. It goes through the heavy hoses to the ship. When fully loaded, the hoses are disconnected in preparation for sailing perhaps a journey of many weeks to some far-off port.
big vessel is underway, the captain is responsible for the safety of his ship and crew. He keeps a careful watch from the ship's bridge and directs the helmsman who steers the vessel on a proper course out of port. The captain has many duties. His skill as the master of an ocean-going vessel is acquired through study, as well as through his years of experience at sea. One important duty is to plot a course or route for his ship to travel. The route must be as direct as possible, but equally important, it must be a safe one. The routes of his tank ship and other tank ships cover the world. For example, some tank ships carry finished products all the way across the Pacific Ocean to Japan. From Sumatra and other Far Eastern countries, crude oil is carried to the United States and elsewhere. A great deal of crude oil comes from Middle Eastern sources. Sometimes it travels up through the Suez Canal to refineries in Europe. Some tank ships carry it to markets in the United States. Tank ship routes crisscross the oceans as they carry both crude oil and finished products wherever they're needed around the world. Some journeys take but a few days. Others last for many weeks across thousands of miles of open sea. On the bridge, a ship's officer is constantly on watch. He's always alert for other ships or the danger of floating objects in the water. Another officer keeps a check on the cargo. He adds up the weight in each tank. Oil products vary in weight, although they occupy the same space. The cargo weight must be evenly distributed so that the ship will remain properly balanced during loading and unloading and while at sea. The chief engineer and his assistant deep in the engine room carefully check instruments which show how the ship's engine is operating. They control the ship's speed on orders from either the captain or the officer on the bridge. It takes a lot of men doing a lot of different jobs to operate a tank ship at sea. The ship's radio officer sends and receives messages in Morse code, a series of dots and dashes which, when decoded, spell out words. The radio officer decodes a message directly. Messages from shore to ship tell about weather conditions, cargo information, docking conditions, and other business matters. Every ship has its cook. His job is an important one, too, for it takes a lot of groceries and a lot of work to feed 30 or more men three times a day. And like sailors everywhere, tank ship seamen develop big appetites from active work in the good, fresh ocean air. At night, the tank ship continues its journey. A careful lookout is kept by the officer on watch. All modern ships have several mechanical aids which are especially valuable at night. High up on the ship's mast, the radar antenna revolves. It sends and receives electrical impulses, which are sent down to the radar scope on the bridge. Other ships, land or floating objects, appear as white masses in the radar scope. The ship's position is in the center of the scope. Here, the radar shows land directly ahead and to the right or starboard side. And an object that appears to be another ship is directly behind. 
Radar is a great aid in navigating the tank ship to its destination safely. Seamen off duty are free to do as they please, day or night. And on a tank ship, there's always time for a rematch in a good game of chess. The welcome sight of land means that the port of call is near. A tank ship may stop at a port where there is no dock. Here, cargo is handled by means of an underwater pipe. A hose connected from the tank ship to the underwater pipe carries the liquid cargo back or forth from ship to shore. A tank ship's port of call might be to an oil producing area where crude oil will be loaded aboard. Or its port of call might be to a coastal refinery or to a village or town in a faraway place. A tank ship might call on a big port, such as the one at San Francisco, or New York, or Houston. It might be to a foreign country, such as Norway, or Venezuela, or Hong Kong. All the oceans of the world provide roads for tank ships as they carry this essential product from where it is found to where it is used.